So I express my thanks to you, sir, for allowing me to participate in the short duration discussion on the prevailing safety and security of the people in the state. Sir, first and foremost of the thing, sir, I would like Mr. to, Green. yes, sir, I'd like to appreciate the government, the Home Department, and the police forces for bringing things on track, sir. So when the MDA government comes into power, the, everybody in the state, somebody might be expecting that gold, silver, will be delivered to each one of them. It might not be, sir. It did not happen also. But, sir, the greatest gift of the MD government to the people of the state is the law and order situation in the state. Sir, I am the best person to speak on this law and order situation of the state because I am like a dictionary. For the last 10 to 15 years, sir, South Carolina District and my constituency, 58 Rangwara City constituency, is the most affected constituency due to law and order situation in the state, sir. I know, sir, it is that of the incidents, what has happened, where, where it has happened, why it has happened, and so everything, sir. So South Carolina, we have the four blocks and four abuse on police forces taken place. The dreaded a man, Lat Sohan Desira, was killed just close to my border. Dreaded man, the Dristi Ratskoa, has been captured and met him to surrender in my constituency. For last 10 to 15 years, sir, my constituency, the South Carolina district has been used as a corridor for all illegal activities, for the movement of militancy from within the state <coughs> and outside the border. Sir, many of the leaders, sometimes we discuss, when we discuss about the situation, we talk with perspective only to, with, with respect to Shillong City, Tura City, but sir, we as a Let's later, we should also talk about the, the beyond Silo, beyond Tura, and every corner of the state. Sir, so I'm happy today. The law and order situation in the state is one of the finest in the history of us. And I'd like to congratulate the police department, the Home Minister, our Honorable Chief Minister, for bringing the glory back of the state of Megalaya. Sir. So we are like a heaven today. I'm frankly speaking, sir, the Garu Hills. And the state is like a heaven today. You see, sir, last 15 years, how we live. Our home closed by 5 p.m. We're not able to move out. But today, sir, we are at the finest, like a heaven state as of today. I see, sir, many dead bodies lying on the highway where my relatives have been beaten and shot at in front of children and, and their wives. And many wives have been because, I mean, women's widow today. So with all this respect, sir, today, if you compare from the past and the present, so we are at the, the finest time. Yes, of course, what the many members have been said today, sir, Deputy Speaker, sir. Yes, it is true. I believe, sir, these are the, there are many issues that have been shared concerned by the armed, honorable members. I believe the uh, Home Department will take a call. And I, I, my small suggestion, sir, yes, sir, we have cross the bridge almost so so like i would like to suggest to the home department say, yes we have the many issues still ongoing but like to request the home department to strengthen the forces the intelligence the technology so that the ongoing uh, somewhere even taking place is a uh, so that can be uh, addressed so there are many law and order situations in the state Sometimes it's design, political design, somewhere it come out as, as it is. So there are many, there are many issues, but most of the issues sometimes is because of, as our Honorable Chief has always said, it's a result of the problems, a result of the problem. Therefore, sir, we, the, our approach as a state government should be, should be uh, technically, and should, we should use our wisdom so that we approach, so that we may not be able to stop the crime, but we should address the issue so that the crime, the result of the problem will not be arise. So with respect to my constituency, I would like to uh, 
uh, bring to the notice of the House to you, Mr. Deputy Speakers. So my constituency share uh, about more than about 80 kilometer international border with Bangladesh. I see Saiban today, the many tens and hundreds of trucks is going beyond, uh, like beyond my, like close to my area, carrying something from Assam. Not coal, sir, not coal, but something I don't know. But sir, I see, sir, many cosmetic, many cattles, many fees, many illegal, even, sir, many of my boys has been victim today because, because my, many of my boys has been used as a lever just to carry, just to carry all this material to beyond the border, where sometimes it was also drugs. Sir, I'm not saying today we should stop all this because our people is getting bread from all this, all this exercise. But sir, selling and buying is not illegal. But sir, since we don't have the system, therefore sir, that become illegal. Therefore sir, yes, market is the issue, market is the issue in, our, in my area. Yes sir, so since we've been allotted 10 minutes, I'll, I'll be trying to be within that permit sir. So, therefore sir, to felicitate the better trade and business in the state of Meghalaya, so that our people will be engaged and involved, will be earned, lively, sir. So, what request the government that why not we establish a border hut in the district of South Korea? Yes, there are, sir, there are many areas where very vulnerable to any illegal activities, sir. So, we'd like to bring to the notice of the house, sir. So South Korea is one of the oldest due district to get that battalion headquarters in the state, sir. Like, sir, from when we come from Bakmara to Ranikor by Moskola Mahadeo, we have to cross a like, dense jungle, reserve forest, national park, and all the things. Where this exact location was used as a corridor by militants in many, many years. It may happen again, sir. It may, it may happen again tomorrow and day after. Therefore, sir, to give confidence to the people and to give more safety to the people so that to protect a further, further arising of, of this kind, sir, like to, I would like to uh, request the Home Department if the purpose seven, well, I'm demanding again, sir, well, if establishment of seven battalion headquarters in the district of South Korea is a need of the hour. So that the event of all illegal activities can be, can be, can be stopped, sir. <clears throat> and also, sir, I see sir, many of my people going across the border for medical treatment, even for, even for frequency delivery, sir. I saw, sir, a few months back, uh, one of my people has just gone to Bangladesh for some treatment, but has been, unfortunately, has been passed away across the border. The dead body has been had to brought back to the India, sir. Sir, all is happening. Open secret, it is, of course, it is illegality. Therefore, sir, therefore, we need to, if we want to uh, protect our state well, we should protect, we should design in such a way that our border are safe and are protected. So I'm just uh, giving the pre precaution to the people of the state, sir. Look at Fulbury, Tiklikla, Rajabala, all these areas, sir. In South Korea, with due respect to my, my, uh, my colleagues, in South Korea, we have only about eight, as per the census, more than about only 8,000 something like non-indigenous people in the, in the district. Where in the South, well, in the West Korea, more than five lakhs people, people from non-indigenous communities in the state. So I'm not saying against them, but yes, many of the people has been coming across the border illegally. So therefore, so we have to build a human seal to protect our state and our nations. Therefore, so when we say when we're talking about protection, we have to we have to strengthen our people. We have to give development to our people. We have to install all the necessary infrastructure to our people, be it health, be it education, be it technology, be it telecommunication, with all kind of livelihood opportunity. Therefore, sir, I would like to request the government through you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. I see many of the militants who have surrendered a few years back. They are my people today. They are very talented in the sports and all. So with all this, like, in the, in, in the sports department, 
district doesn't have the enough infrastructure. If we all the in infrastructure are in place, our voice, our people will be engaged, and they will not go again for the all this illegal activity. Therefore, with with this few submission, I like to request to with a uh, with my humble thanks to for bringing back the glory of the state. Like to uh, uh, like to resume with these few points. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so we are talking about the open crime or the other criminal activity within uh, which is detected or heard, but. The safeguarding of our people should not be in one or two area. The government has to look into a broader way about the issues of safety and security of the people of the state. We are talking about the crime activity which is happening within our eyes. But what about the invisible epidemic that is happening within our state, like joblessness, unemployment, illegal migrations. Sir, there isn't a solid discipline in a policy that is driven by the evidence for economic need or society or history of immigrants as well as migrants. I wonder how safety and security can be better in the due course of time. Now we know that immigrations and migrants are the driven by the xenophobia. So the government has to come up with policies and should have vision and have a better productive workforce to build our own people that we need to give awareness program. Mr. Speaker, sir, now lots of talk about the crime that has happened, that is happening. What about the crime that is happening within our nose, which we don't bother or we don't care? We are not disturbed also. Now, a few days back, I have seen all Meghalaya Minority Student Union has written a letter to the controller of the drug, seeking his intervention into Assam-based quack taking up, you know, uh, residency in Meghalaya and attending patients. Now, these things happen even in my constituency also, last four or five years back. Now, one of the pharmacies, he attended to lots of people in my constituency, and one day it happened that one of the boys under Gambegri Blo in Sandagri area, while saints, Sangma's son or ch child died because of the overdose of medications. And to my surprise, when I visited the pharmacy, the pharmacy was owned by Mekin C.H. Marak at Gambegri. When I went inside, to my surprise, I have seen a separate room for the checkup also. It was so shocking. He was neither a doctor. He was just a quack. The attendee was non tribal from the Assam. I beat up that guy and I took him to the police and I told him, make sure this guy is given some kind of a sober to case. Because of him, that boy has died. Do some kind of investigations, but till that I have not got any kind of a report. That guy have, might have molested so many people from that area. Because what I've heard is that he, that, that guy has checked up so many ladies. So lots of illegal activities that has already happened. And one time, Mr. Speaker, sir, for your information, there was a 12 Ayush quack doctor who was appointed by the government of Meghalaya, but when they found out that they were quack, they were just relieved. They were not given any kind of a penalty. Whether the government is having a hand in glove or those people, with those people, why they were not given a penalty? So to you, Mr. Speaker, sir, I will urge about the government to look back into this matter. This incident not happened in this government, it was happened in the last government. So I would like to request 
to you, Mr. Speaker, sir, if this can be checked into. Now, these are the invisible crimes that is happening within our state. Now, because of the joblessness, Mr. Speaker, sir, lots of our youths are driven into some kind of a dream that they will be given some job in Mumbai, in Pune, in Guwahati, or in other metro cities. Now, one time, our chief minister has to come into uh, come for aid because two, three, uh, six, seven, or eight, nine, ten—I think so—they were taking in the name of job for guarantee that they will be given a, a good job. But after that, they were stranded nowhere. There were lots of unreported cases like this. Not only the boys, even the girls also. Maybe they are being sold to the brothels, you never know. But some of them, they are unreported. Mr. Speaker, sir, we are talking about the illegal immigration and the migrant work, workers every now and then. But there should be a proper checkpoint so that those illegal who are coming to do any kind of a job or any kind of a business within our state should be checked thoroughly and their background should be checked thoroughly. And then moreover, sir, now there's a lots of quacks in the villages. Now our villages doesn't know. They are very simple. They are benighted. They don't have the knowledge whether those pharmacies are having the legal license or not. But I would love to urge at least their concept, there should be some kind of a sensitization as one of our honorable member Balaji has spoken that there should be some kind of a sensitization within the block so that our people might be apprised about what the situations are whether those quacks who are practicing some kind of a pharmacy within their villages can be checked voluntarily by the villagers themselves I don't want to prolong my speeches Mr. Speaker sir but uh, since all the other members has already spoken well and then uh, enough about the other issues that is happening about the woman issue about the children issue about lots of other uh, criminal activities that is, that is happening within our state Mr. Speaker sir so therefore the government should come up with a strategy the method of policy where in such a way that maximum of our people will get benefit out of it and the workforce can be created from within our state those who are we have lots of highly educated we have qualified pharmacies if they can be given some kind of a you know uh, opportunity by the government i believe those kind of quacks will definitely not come in the future those kind of illegal uh, you know immigrants or illegal uh, uh, illegal activities no, will not happen within the state if there is a stringent policy to check all those workers or any kind of a tourist who are coming within the state you know pretending to be a tourist those who are a drug peddler all those can be checked with this few words speaker sir i resume my seat thank you <clears throat> thank you mr speaker sir for allowing me to participate in this short duration discussion <clears throat> brought in by uh, george linda emily from mumbai sir after listening to more than half the honorable members of this house speak I can safely conclude that the faith and confidence in the police department is still held in high esteem. However, there were a lot of reasons mentioned by the honorable members where there could be a lot of scope for improvement and also deliverance. I would like to touch on another subject, sir, which is that for any state to prosper and ensure that the people benefit by this all-round development as has been given by this government, we will need to have every department working with the utmost of integrity and transparency. 
And for that, over the years, we have seen that the police department has been maintaining this decorum in de delivering their services to maintain peace and, and tranquility in our state and among the confidence among the citizens. So, however, recently there was a section of the press which mentioned that there was a scam in the police department. Now, I don't have any facts and figures to confirm what it was. But such irregularities, I would say, does not all go well for the well-being of the institution or, for, or in this case the department. When the uh, uh, Assistant Inspector General of Administration has, it has been allegedly purporting a scam in the department. That will sh send many a shiver down all our spines. But I cannot call it a scam because we don't know. But if this is an irregularity, then were the irregularities also in the past? Because we must remember, sir, the Assistant Inspector General of Police in the Police Department of Admin is considered Staff Officer to the Director General of Police. Therefore, if his actions or her actions tantamount to misleading the Home Department, it will not be in the fitness of things wherein the confidence of the people or the morale of the police force as a whole will be brought down. Subsequently, we were, I was made to understand, sir, that the particular officer concerned has now been transferred, I will not say shifted or removed, transferred to the SF-10 force as his commandant. So the SF-10 force is an elite force created by the government to counter the anti-insurgency elements of the state and to bring peace and tranquility. But if in this instance, again, the officer in question has been given such a bigger responsibility. I feel that maybe the police department may have to do a rethink till the irregularities that were come, if were any were there in the first place, should be cleared. Now, as citizens and honorable members of this house, I would only like to request the Home Department to kindly come clear on this so that there should not be any alleged aspersions cast on the department for something which they have not done or if it has been done then to rectify it so that the people of the state will again repose their full confidence for, this, for their safety. And I wish and I also congratulate them for continuing to do their good work and delivering what is expected of them for our people. So with these few words, sir, I would like to resume my seat. Thank you.